In the greeting room of his office in the Galactic Senate, Valorum regarded his image in an elaborately framed mirror. His right arm was almost healed. Instead of the cumbersome back to tube, a soft case was in place, concealed within the ample sleeve of his overcloak. A pair of Senate guards flanked the door, facing into the room, but Valorum ignored them as he prepared for the imminent arrival of Jedi Masters Mace Windu and Yoda. Normally the Jedi were not asked to intervene in trade disputes, but the attempt on Valorum's life had had less to do with trade than with preserving law and order. Because the Jedi answered to the Supreme Chancellor and the Judicial Department, their assistance could now be solicited, and in that sense the assassination attempt had been a blessing in disguise. Valorum heard the guards snap to attention as the greeting room opened and Say Terrier entered, followed by the two Jedi Masters. Dignified in his hooded robe, linen white tunic, and knee-high brown boots, Mace Windu seemed to fill the room. But it was the slight and enigmatic Yoda, in well-seasoned and less tailored robes, who took up the most space. Masters Windu and Yoda, Valorum said warmly, thank you for coming. Yoda regarded him for a moment, then smiled lightly. Restored you are. Valorum touched his right forearm beneath the cloak. Nearly, if the assassin had been a better shot. Windu and Yoda traded meaningful looks. How may the Jedi be of service, Supreme Chancellor? Windu asked. Valorum motioned to chairs in the sitting area. Won't you be seated? Windu sat. Yoda considered the offer, but then paced to the center of the room, tapping the floor with his cane. Think better in motion, I do. Valorum dismissed Say Terrier and the two guards, and sat down opposite Windu, where he could watch Yoda as well. I trust you've heard that the assassins have been identified as members of the Nebula Front. Valorum waited for Windu's nod before continuing. The few that managed to escape were traced to Asmaru, a world on the edge of the Senex sector. I have communicated with the rulers of Houses Vandron and Elegion, who hold sway over Asmaru and other systems in that part of the Senex sector. They deny granting the Nebula Front safe haven. Rather, they contend that the terrorists seized Asmaru from a scant indigenous population and have been using the planet as a base of operations for raids against ships plying the Rima trade route and Corellian trade spine. Wishing to avoid becoming targets of the Nebula Front, Houses Vandron and Elegion have essentially ignored activities on Asmaru. Until now, Windu interjected. Valorum nodded. They have agreed to help us in our effort to contain the Nebula Front on Asmaru until the Ariadu Trade Summit concludes. Windu's eyebrows beetled. What help are the Senex houses offering? Logistical support. Owing to a nearby gravitic sink, as well as to space mines sown by the Nebula Front, Asmaru is not easily approached. House Vandron has offered to guide us in. Windu considered it. You wish us to accompany the Judicial Department cruisers? Yes, Valorum said flatly. Should you consent, I will petition the Senate for authorization. But allow me to explain. This operation is not designed to be a show of force, nor an attempt at retaliation for what happened here. I propose to dispatch two cruisers, carrying thirty Judicials, along with as many Jedi as you see fit to include. For all we know, those responsible for the attempt on my life could be members of a radical faction. The rest may know nothing of the assassination. Nevertheless, I don't want them disrupting the Ariadu summit. I also wish to learn what they hoped to accomplish by assassinating me. If their actions sprang from not being included in the trade summit, then I want them to know that I am willing to meet with them as soon as they agree to desist in attacking Trade Federation vessels. If they are unwilling to enact a truce, the Trade Federation will likely be given consent to increase their already substantial arsenal of weapons. Windu glanced at Yoda before replying, And if our attempt to communicate these things to those in charge is rebuffed? Valorum frowned. Then I would ask that the Jedi see to it that no one involved with the Nebula Front leaves Asmaru. They are to be contained there until further notice. Windu stroked his smooth chin. You could be sending your judicials into a trap. We have to take that risk, Valorum said sternly. 
then softened his voice to add, We should at least attempt to negotiate before deciding on desperate measures. He looked from Windu to Yoda and back again. Yoda stopped moving to gaze unsympathetically at Valorum. Want to see this conflict resolved, we do? Windu interlocked his fingers and leaned forward in his chair. The Trade Federation should not be granted additional weaponry. Defensive or otherwise, weapons are not the way to settle this. Such actions will lead only to further escalation. I agree, Valorum said sadly, and I wish it was that simple, but the Federation is deeply entrenched in Republic politics. Windu firmed his lips. We will consider what help we could lend at Asmaru. Valorum was disappointed. Thank you, Master Windu. I would also request that you consider providing security at the Ariadu summit. No one, I fear, is safe. <laughs>